um, since Mark has bravely taken us into this space where we can stand up and do presentations, I will do the same. Um, so my name is Kavi Bhala. I'm from the University of Chicago. And I want to be to spend the next 10 minutes talking about this graph, which shows the history of road safety performance of OECD countries over the last 60 years. And I think this graph has some remarkably special features that are very important for us to grapple with. So you can see the US and the UK that have bolded out. And you can see that until about 1970, both of these countries have rising road traffic deaths. After that, they have declining for the next five decades almost. And what is even more remarkable is that that same pattern is seen in pretty much all of the industrialized nations. The rising road traffic deaths till the 1970s and then declining afterwards. The question is, why? What happened in 1970? What happened afterwards? And the reason why this question is really important for us right now is because most developing countries sit somewhere here. And they're walking up this path or sitting at a high level. And the question is, how do we get them on this downward trajectory? Um, and I'm going to grapple with that for the next few minutes with you. Unfortunately, this question, when it's been asked by developmental economists, they've given an answer that is not helpful. When they've answered the question of what caused this change, the way they've treated the problem is that they've transformed the data so there is income on the x-axis, so the same data set, but with income on the x-axis. And then they point out that there is a U-shaped curve over here, meaning that when countries are poor, as they become richer, they have more road traffic deaths. But then there comes a point in time when they are rich enough to start investing in solutions. That is when they begin to care about the health of their people, and they begin to think that the road carnage is a very big problem, and they start investing in solutions. This is not a small literature in road safety. It's actually a large literature. And here's a sample of publications, some from leading economists. So this paper that I've highlighted over here is likely one of the most highly cited papers in the global road safety uh, world. It's from the World Bank. Maureen Cropper is a World Bank economist. Notably, the paper points out, doing this exact same Kuznets curve analysis, that India should expect to see rising road traffic deaths till about 2047. That's a very long time. And that's the central problem with this argument, that it creates this economic determinism. India is too poor to be acting on this issue right now. In 2047, it'll be rich enough when it should start caring about its people and trying to solve this problem. I'm going to argue that there is something very important that has been missed by the developmental economists. And that becomes clear when you look at the same graph again and look at the US and UK, which we were talking about before. So this is the US, this is the UK, and you see that the US peaked at almost twice the income as the UK. It is certainly not true that there was a certain income level at which these two countries started addressing the road safety problem. Remember that I showed you time trends before, and now you see the US and UK, and you see that they're almost synchronized in time the peak happens at almost exactly the same time, as it does with all the other countries in the background too. So just going back again, the income hypothesis, which claims that there is a peak income at which, there is an income threshold at which road safety interventions are put in place by governments, I think is a poor explanation because these two countries are at very, very different income levels. Instead, there's something interesting that's happening in time when they're, at a certain point in time, these countries have acted to solve the problem. Brian provided us with a rich history of what happened in the US with some references to what was happening um, in Europe as well. Keeping that in mind, my hypothesis was that if we were to investigate what happened in time after controlling for the income effects, we might see if there is something special happening in time. So how do we do that? We, the way I have approached this problem is that I've taken the same approach taken by economists. So it's a panel data set that they typically analyze, and they build a regression model. So this is what Maureen Cropper would have done, as well as all the other economists who are doing econometric analysis with this panel data set. What they do is they model death rates as a function of income and income squared 
which allows you to model an, a downward facing parabola. A parabola, and if the coefficients are right, it's downward facing. And so everyone who does Kuznets curve analysis shows you that if you model this curve, you get a positive coefficient for GDP and a negative co coefficient for GDP squared, hence a downward facing parabola. All I have done is that I've added to this time fixed effects to try and see what is happening in time after you control for the income effects that has been discussed extensively in the, in the past. And just as a side note, I follow methods that would be considered sensible. So in time series cross-section methods, there's a big literature from Beck and Katz on how to do time series analysis. They ask you to include uh, a lag-dependent variable to, avoid to account for serial autocorrelation. They suggest using country fixed effects. So I've done what I'm supposed to be doing. But let me show you what happens in time after controlling for income. So here are the time fixed effects. Each of these curves is for one age and sex group. What you're seeing is, so here's how you should interpret the time fixed effect. The time fixed effect is what's happened to road safety performance after you account for the income effect, after you account for the fact that these countries are becoming richer and hence doing something. What you're seeing is that those time fixed effects are constant slash noisy before 1970, but then they have a trend, and that trend is very consistently declining. What that suggests is that prior to 1970, the Kuznets hypothesis applied because there was nothing special happening. But after 1970, something special happened in time. And that something special was became stronger and stronger and stronger because this curve just becomes, continues to decline. All of these curves continue to decline, suggesting that whatever was happening in time was becoming more and more and more effective. Now, the description of what happened has been given much better by Brian than I can do in 10 minutes. Are they OECD countries, all those? These are all OECD countries, yes. Okay. You can see the list of countries up there. Mm -hmm. But very to summarize from my perspective what Brian described, the 19, late 1960s, early 1970s was a time of paradigm shift where we went from folklore, which was mainly driver-focused behavior change uh, mechanisms, to evidence-based policies that eventually, be, eventually came to be called safe system interventions. And this is really, really important for us because most developing countries live in that folklore era today, and we want them to transition into an uh, evidence-based era. So, Given that there is shortage of time, I will conclude very quickly. In the paper that we've circulated um, that goes with this presentation, I have analyzed what six interventions would do in six developing countries. Those interventions are the six interventions that I suspect most of us would agree would be sensible interventions. Because there's a lot that's been done in high income countries in the modern era that is not evidence-based. But these generally, I suspect most of us would agree are important interventions. So helmet use, seat belt use, uh, speed control, drink driving, and designing cars for occupant and pedestrian safety. There's actually a substantial literature evaluating these interventions around the world. And some, some of them have Cochrane reviews from which we can extract relative risks and apply them to baseline road traffic uh, injury rates in different countries. Don't look at the details, the point is if low and middle income countries were to apply these known interventions, they would see benefits. And they would see large benefits with things like speed control, as you would expect. My main point is that developing countries do not need to wait to get rich enough to invest in road safety. They should act now and start deploying evidence-based interventions just like industrialized nations did in the late 1960s, early 1970s. Thank you. Thank you.